Hey builders, welcome to D&D Builds, where we have an outlet to make all sorts of ridiculous Dungeons and Dragons builds, and hopefully stop driving the people in our lives insane with them. Today we're going to be building a full adventurer party, and for inspiration, we're using the game that got me into Final Fantasy in the first place, Final Fantasy X. And I couldn't just stick with one member of the party, so I wanted to take Yuna and all of her guardians, making a full adventuring party. I have such an insane amount of love for this game as it's the first Final Fantasy I ever played, and it got me so hooked that I went and bought older Final Fantasies just to make sure I played as much of them as possible. The absolutely amazing storytelling in this game changed the way I look at gaming as a whole, so hopefully I can do it justice. Before we dive into the builds, if you like this kind of content, make sure to hit this video with a sub like button. That's a subscribe, a like, and a comment. And if you want to help me make content like this even more, feel free to check out the link to my Patreon in the description down below. But now grab a blitz ball and try to ignore some super awkward laughter. as we try and build out the adventuring party from Final Fantasy X. For pretty much all of these builds, I would stick with Knight of the Order, as you're a guardian of a summoner, and the order could be of Yevon. There's a couple alternatives that you could go with, like Athlete for a Blitzball player, or Mercenary Veteran, since Orin is the most experienced of the crew. And obviously Yuna is going to be the odd one out here, since she is the person that everyone else is guarding. Let's start with one of the most straightforward characters of the party, Lulu. I would go with Sorcerer just to make sure you can do some twin casting or quick casting with their meta magic abilities, but Sorcerers are very heavily dependent on Charisma, and Lulu is probably one of the least charismatic characters in the game, outside of maybe Kamari. She is more of a quiet, brooding type. So instead, we're going to go variant human with her, and we'll take the feat Meta Magic Adept. That way we can still do some twin casting to try and pull off her overdrive. And then we're just going to go full Evocation Wizard. Evocation Wizard really focuses on blasting people with magic, and that's most of what she does. So I consider her pretty easily taken care of. And if you really want to get fancy with it, you can say her overdrive is over channel from the School of Evocation. That way you really maximize the damage. Moving right along to one of the other simpler characters to build, Riku. She's pretty straightforward and she very easily fills the thief role in the party. But we are going to do a bit of a multi-class and really only take five levels of Rogue Thief. And then we're going to put the rest into Artificer as her other primary ability is Alchemy. So we're going to go with an Alchemist Artificer. And we'll take that all the way to the 15th level of Artificer. That way we can get Chemical Mastery. This should hopefully take care of her overdrive where you can mix some incredible potions. Now let's go to a definite fan favorite with Orin. Orin is very heavily influenced by the samurai culture, especially since his overdrive is Bushido. And there is a fighter subclass called Samurai, which would make this super easy. But fighters are well known for attacking a lot, and Orin is much more about quality than quantity when it comes to swinging his sword. And to address this, I gotta throw up a little spoiler warning in case you haven't played this game, but I'm guessing if you're watching this video that you're already a fan of the game. So with that in mind, I would actually say that Orin was a samurai fighter in his first pilgrimage with Jet and Lord Braska. But then after he's struck down, he comes back and focuses on just hitting really hard, almost as if it was triggering the samurai feature strength before death. And because he made promises to both Jet and Lord Braska, I would say that's a bit of an oath. So I'm gonna make Orin a paladin. And we can't just make him a human paladin, despite the fact that he's definitely gonna pick up Great Weapon Master at some point, and having a human variant would make that very easy. No, I have a different concept in mind. Thanks to the Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, there's a race called Reborn. In the description for this race, it specifically says, death isn't always the end. The Reborn exemplify this. Being individuals who have died, yet somehow still live. With that in mind, we will take this as our race, and then, like I mentioned, we will go Paladin, so we can really smite the shit out of Sin. We could go Oath of the Ancients, but that's a different game. And I was tempted to take Oath of the Watchers, as their oath is all about protecting the mortal realm from 
other realms of existence. But I think Oath of Devotion works a little bit better, as he is a truly devoted friend. So when he's built out, make sure to bump up your strength, take a few points into Charisma, because even though he isn't Mr. Chatty, he is still a very beloved and well-known character. And then at some point along the way, I would definitely take Great Weapon Master. And then we will go from one of the most beloved characters of this game, to one of the most ignored, Kimari. Because I know I'm not the only person that got to Mount Gagazette and realized, oh sh ah! he has to fight solo. I have not leveled him up at all. He's actually a little difficult to build, but just like in the game, he's probably not going to be optimized with how we have to build him out to be true to character. First things first, as far as a race, we're going to go to Baxi. It's pretty obvious he's a giant cat person. You could go Leonin if you really want to, but he's definitely more of a panther type, so I would go with Tabaxi. Then I would take my first three levels in Barbarian. He never really wears armor, so you get the unarmored defense, and you get axe to big weapons, and he's usually fighting with a halberd. And as far as a path, I would take Path of the Zealot, since he is a guardian protecting a religious figure. Then, after those first three levels, I would actually go Rogue. I know with a Rogue, you're not going to be able to utilize your sneak attack damage with a halberd, but like I said, he is not going to be optimized. I would go ahead and take Rogue all the way to level 17 with Arcane Trickster. This gives you the ability Spell Thief. This will be the best way we can simulate Kimari's ability to steal enemy abilities and use them as his own. I know it's particularly rough, and he's not going to deal a ton of damage, but maybe that's perfect for his character, because I know I'm not the only person who neglected his sphere grid. Next, let's jump into the voice of Bender himself. I say the whole world must learn of our peaceful ways by force. With Waka. With Waka we get to go back to a human race, and we'll obviously take human variant to try and hit everything we need. And the feat we can take is Tavern Brawler. This will give us proficiency with improvised weapons, because I don't know what the hell else a blitz ball would be other than an improvised weapon. I mean seriously, he has access to swords. He gave one to the protagonist of the game, but instead he just wants to thunk people on the head with a blitz ball. And we could finally take a different background here with athletes but since the Besaid Aurochs tend to really suck and never won a game before the main character came around, I would go ahead and avoid that background and just stick with Knight of the Order like we do with many of the others. As far as stats for Waka, I would pretty much dump his wisdom as he is one of the least perceptive and least insightful characters in the entire game. And while we're at it, I would go ahead and dump intelligence too. As far as a class, I would go ahead and take fighter. And with fighter, we can get the fighting style thrown weapon. That way we can really utilize our blitz ball, since this does give us a plus two bonus to damage rolls, which we're definitely gonna need since improvised weapons only usually do a 1d4 of damage. As far as a particular subclass for fighter, I was tempted to go with Eldritch Knight. That way you could cast magic weapon on your blitz ball and pull off some of his own overdrives, but frankly, Waka's not exactly smart. He's pretty dumb. And Eldritch Knights do need some intelligence. So instead, I'll go Rune Knight. With Rune Knight, you can engrave your Blitz Ball with runes, such as a Fire Rune, or a Frost Rune, or even a Storm Rune. That way you can pull off the elemental reels that are part of his overdrive. Unfortunately, we don't have a way to pull off a returning weapon without some magic items, so just make sure you have a bag of holding just filled with Blitz Balls. Then, when you use your overdrive attack reels, allowing you to attack a crap load of times, which is really like a fighter using his action surge, you'll at least have a bit of ammunition in your bag. Now with only two characters left in the party, we're gonna go with the protagonist, and yes, I know his name is supposed to be pronounced Titus, but when I played the game, I called him Titus, and I think Titus sounds a little weird, so... I'm gonna keep calling him Titus throughout the rest of this video, hopefully you can accept that. So Titus is actually pretty straightforward, except for his race. We can't just take Variant Human like we did for some of the others, because again, spoiler alert, Titus isn't technically human, he's a dream. But D&D &D 5e, 
does plan for pretty much everything. And in the source book Eberron, Rising from the Last War, there's a race called Kalashtar. They are a compound race created from the union of humanity and renegade spirits from the plane of dreams. There's nothing that could be more spot on as far as a race description for Titus, since he is a dream of the faith. As far as background, we could stick with our Knight of the Order like we are with some of the others, but he actually has the ability to go athlete since he is a good athlete. Then we're just gonna go fighter, and we can take the Eldritch Knight fighter. That way you can get access to haste, which is a definite spell that Titus uses pretty often. You can use Action Surge for his Slice and Dice ability. You can try and simulate Spiral Cut with something like Steel Wind Strike. And while you're playing Blitzball, you can also cast Water Breathing. Then lastly, if you want to do something like Energy Rain, you could utilize the spell Magic Missile. And with that, we have the final character of the party, Yuna. She's actually a little more complicated than most of the rest. As far as races, you could take Human, but frankly, there is a difference between how two different races in Final Fantasy X are treated. So if you want to add a little extra flavor into this build, you could make Riku an elf as a substitute for Elbed. And then, since Yuna is half Elbed, you can do half elf. Then Yuna definitely gets the background acolyte as she is a summoner, which is essentially a priestess. And then we just have to decide on what class to go with when it comes to Yuna. I was tempted to go with Druid, and Shepherd Druids are really well built for summoning, but it didn't feel quite right, and Yuna is definitely part of a major religion in Spira. So with that, I think we should probably go with Cleric, and I definitely would not go with Grave Cleric, as their eyes of the grave can occasionally sense the presence of undead, and she seems to not know that Everyone around her is in some way dead. So instead, I'm actually going to go with Arcana Domain. This will help us out a little later in the build. But first, let's cover some basics. Obviously, she can cure wounds, which is the Final Fantasy equivalent of Cure, Cura, and Curaga. You'll later get the access to Regeneration, which is the equivalent of Regen. Holy is kind of like Guiding Bolt. And then obviously there's plenty of different resurrection spells for the Final Fantasy Life spell. And then of course there's things like Remove Curse, Dispel Magic, and Cure Disease for the Asuna spell. But now we need to tackle the more important part of this character. And no, we're not going to be jumping into any dress spheres. We're going with Final Fantasy X, not X-2. Yuna has the ability to summon Aeons to protect her. At a lower level, we could assume this is something like Spirit Guardians maybe. Then one spell level level above that, you can get Guardian of Faith, which is getting much closer. Then one level above that, you have the fifth level Cleric spell, Summon Celestial. Summon Celestial is pretty straightforward, but it's also kind of generic, but you can decide how it looks on your own. So we could be lazy and cover all our bases with that, but that's not really the style of this channel. There's the seventh level cleric spell, Conjure Celestial. This allows you to summon a celestial of challenge rating four or lower. Although you can use a ninth level spell slot and summon a CR5 creature instead. With this spell at its base level, you can summon a Quaddle, which is a medium celestial and it looks just like Valifor. It might not have his energy ray ability, but it's pretty much the closest we're gonna get as far as summoning him. And also, if we upcast this spell, we can summon a unicorn, which will cover our Ixion summoning. At the 8th level spells of Cleric, you can access Holy Aura and Sunburst, both of which can pretty ideally substitute for Holy. And then, when you finally get access to a 9th level spell slot, it's the same level that you get the Arcana Mastery feature from your subclass. This allows you to take a wizard spell from the 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th spell levels. And while our cleric spells did cover most of the summoning, we still want to focus on some of the more elemental-focused summoning. But there isn't a conjure elemental at 6th, 7th, 8th, or 9th level for the wizard spell list. So we need to go about this in a very roundabout way. At 9th level, you get access to Wish, which allows you to cast any other spell as if it were 8th level. And Wizard has a spell in 5th level 
called Conjure Elemental. That way you can finally summon Ifrit by summoning a Fire Elemental. And while I would love that Elemental to be an Ifriti, just because of the closeness of the name, unfortunately we can't pull that one off. We can only summon a level 8 or below using this method. So we can summon a basic Fire Elemental, or we can summon Big Zorn. Even though it's an Earth Elemental, I just can't help but think about how Ifrit just chucks a big ass rock as his overdrive. You can also use this same method Method to summon lesser demons or summon shadow spawn. To pull off summoning anima, you can still use summon elemental for summoning an ice elemental for Shiva. You can summon undead to get Yojimbo, as he is the soul of a fallen samurai. And then the last two we have to worry about are Bahamut and the Magus sisters. While we could try to sort out something like conjure woodland beings, frankly I think it's better to rely on spirit guardians for the Magus sisters. And we can actually use a 8th level wizard spell for Bahamut with Illusory Dragon. I absolutely love this spell and it's so much fun to play around with. That should cover pretty much all of the summons and just for the hell of it, if you really want Null Shock and all of the elemental blocking spells that are in Final Fantasy X, don't waste time with multi-classing. Just grab the Magic Initiate feat and pick up Absorb Elements. Now your party should be able to cast spells like Lulu, mix potions like Riku, steal spells like Kamari, hit people really f***ing hard with a sword, smiting them to oblivion like Orin, thunk bad guys on the forehead with a blitz ball like Waka, slice and dice like Titus, and summon all of the Aeons like Yuna. Having a full party build for Final Fantasy X in Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. Most of these characters are pretty straightforward, with a few minor complications to solve for. But I couldn't help but do a build for this game. I loved this game so much when I first played it, and I've replayed it countless times since. I still cry like a baby every time I finish it, and frankly, if you don't at least shed a small tear at the end of this game, you might be missing part of your soul. So despite a few times with awkward dubbing and the cringy laughter that actually does fit into the story and narrative, I can't help but have this be one of my favorite games of all time. If you're a fan of Final Fantasy, and especially this game, let me know in the comments down below. Maybe in the future I will do a deeper dive into some of these characters, but for now I really wanted to get a build out and talk a little bit about my love for this game. If you like my content, go ahead and spike a blitz ball right into that like button, and feel free to subscribe. I post videos like this pretty regularly. If you want to help me make content like this, check out the link to my Patreon in the description down below. And until next time, just for making it to the end of my video, I'll keep my fingers crossed, hoping that you roll at least three nat 20s in your next D&D session. I'm happy we could take this little trip to Xanarkin together, and hopefully you don't get stuck in a blitzball tournament before my next video.